We don't have a word for the opposite of loneliness. We don't have a word for the opposite of loneliness. We don't have a word for the opposite of loneliness. We don't have a word for the opposite of loneliness. We don't have a word for the opposite of loneliness. But if we did, I could say that's what I want in life. It's not quite love and it's not quite community. It's just this feeling that there are people, an abundance of people who are in this together, who are on your team. When the check is paid and you stay at the table, when it's 4 a.m. and no one goes to bed, that night with the guitar, that night we can't remember, that time we did, we went, we saw, we laughed, we felt. These tiny groups that make us feel loved and safe and part of something even on our loneliest nights when we stumble home to our computers, partnerless, tired, awake. We won't have those next year. We won't live on the same block as all our friends. We won't have a bunch of group texts. This scares me. More than finding the right job or city or spouse, I'm scared of losing this web we're in. This elusive, indefinable opposite of loneliness this feeling I feel right now. But let us get one thing straight. The best years of our lives are not behind us. They're part of us, and they are set for repetition as we grow up and move to New York, and away from New York, and wish we did or didn't live in New York. I plan on having parties when I'm 30. I plan on having fun when I'm old. Any notion of the best years comes from cliched, should have, if I'd, wish I'd, we're our own hardest critics, and it's easy to let ourselves down. Procrastinating. Cutting corners. More than once I've looked back on my high school self and thought, how did I do that? How did I work so hard? Our private insecurities follow us, and will always follow us. But the thing is, we're all like that. Nobody wakes up when they want to. Nobody did all of their reading, except maybe the crazy people who win the prizes. We have these impossibly high standards and we'll probably never live up to our perfect fantasies of our future selves. But I feel like that's okay. We're so young. We're so young. We're 22 years old. We have so much time. There's this sentiment I sometimes sense, creeping into our collective conscious as we lie alone after a party or pack up our books when we give in and go out, that it is somehow too late. That it is somehow too late. That it is somehow too late that it is somehow too late, that others are somehow ahead, more accomplished, more specialized, more on the path to somehow saving the world, somehow creating or inventing or improving, that it's too late now to begin a beginning, and we must settle for continuance, for commencement, the sense of possibility, this immense and indefinable potential energy, and it's easy to feel like that slipped away. We never had to choose, and suddenly we've had to. Some of us have focused ourselves. Some of us know exactly what we want and are on the path to get it. Already going to med school, working at the perfect NGO, doing research. To you, I say both congratulations and you suck. For most of us, however, we're somewhat lost in this sea of liberal arts, not quite sure what road we're on and whether we should have taken it. If only I had majored in biology. If only I'd gotten involved in journalism as a freshman. If only I'd thought to apply for this or for that. What we have to remember is that we can still do anything. We can change our minds. We can start over. Get a post back or try writing for the first time. The notion that it's too late to do anything is comical. It's hilarious. We're graduating from college. We're so young. We can't, we must not lose this sense of possibility because in the end, it's all we have.